Amazing. I'm completely blown away. I mean. Six months ago, a client reached out to us about a conference table project. So me and the team put our heads together and came up with a pretty wild design. And they bid on it. This thing is gonna be sick. We've got stainless steel, powder-coated metal base. We've got a removable top so we can add challenge coins to it. We've got LEDs that light up the whole bottom. We've got an epoxy logo that has like 11 different pores going on. And we gotta fit this whole damn thing in an elevator so it's knocked down. Jordan's got a box built already for the epoxy. Let's get ripping. All right, guys, so now we are going to pour the center circle. It's going to be a multi-stage pour. We're going to pour green first. Pretty cool logo, pretty crazy. A lot of moving parts. Total boat. Six at Fathom for this one with black diamond, green apple pigment. This is the best one that we find the color match with. Should be good to go. The hammies are tight from carrying these massive pieces of lumber around, which we're now gonna turn into two seven foot by 40 inch tabletops. And Sam's looking around because I haven't moved any of these. Him and Jordan moved all of them. We need them to get ripped down the size and then get all these things planed and jointed together for these tops though. So let's go. The next day. The first round of glue up is dry. We got these things out of clamps. Now everything's gonna go through the planer once just to kind of flatten everything out. And then we've got another round of glue up to make these things the full width. So lots of work to do, but pretty simple process. The boys got a lot of the parts cut, which means it's time to start welding. We tend to TIG weld these projects because it's a cleaner and prettier weld. It'll take me a little bit longer, but I think for something of this scale and what this client's paying us, it definitely needs to be like our top tier product. I'm gonna throw on the helmet, I'm gonna start mocking some stuff up and, uh, and just start burning some wells. All right, so the center podium is done. I am fixturing up the other two parts. These are going to essentially reflect the same size and shape as the center and then attach together with a center stretcher. So I'm just gonna kind of tack this sucker together. Jordan cut some plates for the top. Then I'll hopefully be able to get this done by the end of the day so we can get this sucker to powder coat. We'll see though. What the hell are you doing? What are you doing? Why'd you turn my fan in? off? We got I'm, work to do. I am literally enjoying myself. I'm sweating like a dog in there. That stuff's gotta go to powder coat today. But I'm out here with my EcoFlow, using my fan to cool off. I got solar power. How dare you come out here and interrupt me? And if you're jealous of this setup right here, we're pulling this thing out everywhere we go now. We've been running fans, we've been running a water cooler out by the sawmill with the EcoFlow system. It allows you to take power anywhere you go. Whether you're sitting outside in your parking lot just trying to catch some rays while your employees bother you, or you wanna go out in the middle of the woods and fire up your grill and have yourself a quiet, nice little evening. So if you're in the market for one of these products, I have an incredible opportunity for you. For Prime Days, which is July 4th through July 17th, you can save 46% or $900 on some of their models. They've got it on pre-sale too from June 28th till July 3rd. You can save all kinds of money. Check out the link in the description below to find out more information about EcoFlow and their incredible Prime Day sales and promos. Now, excuse me, give me five more minutes, turn my fan back on. <laughs> so Jordan has a really cool design figured out for this base and it's got some stainless steel parts that have like circuit boards and there's a crack in, there's all kinds of cool stuff. So we don't have the right tools to cut stainless steel. So John's buddy up at Bova Corp said that he could help us out. They've got a fiber laser, I believe it is. It's super cool looking. So we're gonna go up there, check out how this thing works and pick up the parts.
epoxy's cured, and now what we're gonna do is cut a pocket in for the globe. This is gonna be like a three-stage pour, I believe, because we got the globe, we got the continent, and we got like the white circuitry. Worst comes to worst, we'll have to re-pour, but I really don't want to. Let's pray this goes well. Howdy, stepping in for Jordan, and it's Gordon. Gonna make sure his fits. Yep, that will do. That will do, pig. So Jordan and the boys have been ripping on this center logo here, and this is probably gonna be the most complex multi-pour resin logo we've done to date. I think we have at least like three to five pours. Next pour, though, is gonna be this Golden Indigo from Black Diamond Pigments here. We're using it to resemble the globe. That would be Z Globe. And we need it to be blue, then we're gonna come back with that. We're gonna cut the continents in. Jordan's got this weird looking pocket here, but it's actually the perfect size for what we need. So we're gonna mix up a little resin. Hope I don't screw this up, because we only got one shot. We have to redo the whole thing. This is Heinzfield Trough Piss. That's the color. We want this to be pretty solid, so I'm gonna dump all this thing in. Yeah. There's a lot more in there than I thought. It's like metallic. Three days later. Now we gotta cut in the continents and then there's some circuitry that goes up here. So we're gonna do that all together since they're not really close. Also the eye of the Kraken I need to cut out. The continent, I'm pretty excited for. This is gonna look really cool. I'm a little nervous on this one. Yeah, we're just gonna send it. This looks sick, dude. Yeah, it's probably the best thing I've CNC so far. Like, it's the best thing you've ever done? On the CNC, probably. I agree, that looks sick. So, this is. Uh, I don't know if you can see. Gonna it. get another pour. Yeah, and then we have. Circuits. We are now going to fill in continents, circuitry, and part of the eye of the Kraken. Continents are like this off colored blue. So, we are going with black diamonds, blue slate, a really cool color. And then we're just gonna use like white dye for the circuits. So this project has thrown us a curveball here. It's two standard like seven foot by 40 inch tabletops, except for whatever reason, we forgot how to glue tables together. By we, I mean him. Aww. Now mistakes happen sometimes and it could be a ton of things like, like humidity, um, acclimation. There's a three imp stage glue up too. Improper joints we did, yeah, multi-stage. Go ahead, you can see it wobbling on the sawhorses. I got an idea. <laughs> On the welding table, because I know it's perfectly flat. Let's get some clamps around the outside, because we have a little bit of room here. Clamp it down and see if we can pull it into flat, then I think we can embed some C-channel and that should hold it. This was glued up in three parts. And those three parts, after glue up, need to go back through the milling process if they're not perfect, because everything compounds when you don't have square boards to glue up. And I can't reiterate this enough, if you're building stuff on your own, build with square wood, it will save you a lot of time and money and aggravation. So we're going to cut this apart. Fortunately, we always leave ourselves some play, so we have an inch of extra on both sides that we can run a saw blade down, lose that, still get the width we need on the final. It'll barely be noticeable and it should help us fix this issue. The next day. The tabletops are looking beautiful. We got them sanded just to like a rough 80 grip. And before we go ahead and put this super awesome logo into the center of this thing, we need to connect these with these fancy Festool Domino connectors. These connectors are super cool. They work with the Domino XL. So if you're already rocking one of those in your shop to make floating tenon joinery, these are a great way if you need to make your furniture knock down. If you... Did she send? Yep. Yeah. <sighs> Titan and Prey has definitely been Motto. Why oh, you're like helping? Oh, that's so we gotta go cut a big circle. Your table's not going with you there, guy. I know. It is time to cut the finished top. We're gonna put a big old pocket in it. 
drill two tiny holes for the comm systems and then two other pockets for the power boxes. I'd be lying if I was saying I'm not a little puckered right now, but let's do it. So now we got the logo flattened. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the pocket for the stainless so that sits nice and flush in there. And then we'll cut out the circle, take it out of the mold, finally see what it looks like with the cracking in it. I've been waiting, gosh, probably like two months now for this. So we just got everything back from powder coat, looking crispy. Now we get to install the panels. Uh, to do this, instead of an epoxy that could potentially have squeeze out and get everywhere, I we're gonna use a double-sided carpet tape. Should give us an opportunity to stay nice and clean as I'll put the tape on the face and then drop the panel in. Okay. Ooh. The center is done. Actually, we, do, we gotta put a shelf in there, but that's not fun. Okay. Everyone knows I love a good mock-up. That looks sharp. Base is pretty much assembled, but we gotta add a little pizzazz to it. We're going with these LED. These are from Twinkly, it's called Flex. It's a really high-end LED strip. They're 100 bucks a kit, so you can uh, program it with your phone and do a bunch of different effects. And then the vision is, we'll go in here. It's just really cool. I could sit here all day and just look at it. These are ready for finish. We're going with a gray Rubio as chosen by the client. So first we're gonna clean it. We got some of uh, Rubio's cleaner and a spritzer cause I prefer to spritz. And then we'll uh, squeegee this sucker down and then get working on some of the other parts that still need to be finished. We're going two fold at this sucker. We've got the Rubio itself and then I will come back, applicator the edges so that way I'm not running it over the sides. I have a little bit more control. Okay, now it's time for some fun stuff. This is an insert to where a bunch of challenge coins are gonna sit. And we're gonna make it felty with flocking. We've done this before if you've seen my jewelry box and I've also used it on some other projects. It's pretty cool. You got some pretty stinky, sticky shit here. So, you know, don't drink it. Make sure your rim's ventilated. <clears throat> first thing we're gonna do is just apply it. We try to hit the outside first. More or less get a coating on the whole thing. Now the fun part, this is a mini flocker. And what you do is you fill it with these fibers. Got that about halfway full. I'm gonna hit the outside and then let it overspray. Then we'll let this sit overnight and shake it off in the morning. Gotta be honest, this thing looks super weird. So I'm gonna hit it with a couple coats of lacquer here. It should make this thing really pop. And in the words of our forefathers, let us spray. All right, we are at the Quintel office. It's been months, so let's get this thing installed. We like to deliver with surgical precision. So glove up, scrub up. Jordan just actually gave me a full bath in the men's room. SpongeBob. Ooh. Ooh. 
Let's just Halo music, John. She's oh, in. Oh, look at this. Yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> I love the F-bomb. <laughs> Just boom, out the gate. See the LEDs? Yeah, very good. So they move, they sync, and you can change colors and stuff. Jordan got real weird with those, but if you guys want to get some house music going. Is this where the challenge coins are going to go? Is yes. It? This pops out, uh -huh. and then the challenge coins will go kind of all around here. We uh. You got your integrated sound system here. We'll get this all hooked up. This should be accessible for ether and power. Solid maple top with semi-custom gray finish on it. Stainless steel on all the panels. Black powder coat on the rest and, and carbon steel. Everything's TIG welded together. And you got an epoxy logo with the stainless steel cracking. You know, Jordan, Jordan brought the thing home. Uh, so of anybody, you know, round of applause for Jordan. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm super proud. This is like his first like major, if you want to call it like product management job. And he, I was just saying, I think it might, it might take the cake over the black rifle table. I, I'm completely blown away. I mean, this really, uh, once you see it in person, this really blows you away at, at how much detail you guys put into it. It's really a piece of art. It's what we like to do. Bring, bring crazy visions to life. That's like, <laughs> that's my MO. What do you guys do? Yeah, we bring wild dreams to life. That's what we do. Thank you again. John, thank you so really, much. Really, really appreciate it. unbelievable. Yeah. So this thing turned out sick. I'm gonna be honest, it might be the best thing we've ever done. Let me know if you think the same down in the comments below. These guys are gonna load it up with all their challenge coins around here, and we are gonna get out of their hair so they can get back to work. If you wanna see more ridiculous projects just like this one, check out this playlist right here. See ya.